Howdy, this is Amy Smith. This is program logic model presentation for Scotty's House, the host organization. Uh, with regard to program efficacy and the 24-hour rule for P1 abuse cases. Scotty's House is a nonprofit child advocacy center based in Bryan, Texas. The organization provides safety and healing for child victims of abuse. That can be physical, sexual abuse, uh, witnessing a violent crime, sex trafficking, human trafficking. They facilitate the investigative process with the well-being of the child in mind and serve seven counties, including Brazos County. And very importantly, involve a multidisciplinary team that involves child protective services and local law enforcement. And that's very important, as we'll see later. The need really emanates from a 2019 strict uh, additional focus by federal and state authorities in requiring all P1, which are the most severe abuse cases, to be forwarded to child advocacy centers like Scotty's House within 24 hours of report. And Scotty's House um, wants to evaluate how are abused children's needs being met with this heightened requirement. What are the key performance indicators that can help address gaps for enhancing uh, services? This flowchart on the right is hard to read, but gives you a, a sense of the complexity that involves each and every case. And you can see the P1 requirement for initiating the investigation. And that is really on the Child Protective Services or uh, law enforcement agencies to, to initiate that and referring a case to Scotty's house within 24 hours of becoming aware of it. Of course, we know some children are taken into emergency protective custody immediately, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Very complex process. I just included this flowchart to show um, the complexity that, that they have to deal with, and therefore the multidisciplinary process where you have Child Protective Services, Law Enforcement, and Scotty's House working together are very important to help navigate through this complexity, um, helping those who are most, most in need. Getting to a case closed does not always mean, unfortunately, that it's over for the children, as we know, and Scotty's House has long-term goals as well as short-term goals in um, addressing those needs. This is the logic model for Scotty's House. Uh, you can see resources, uh, staffing, and, and funding for sustainability, uh, having a multidisciplinary process. So these cases come in from the uh, Child Protective Services, usually referred to the CAC, and children are uh, brought in to Scotty's House where they can have forensic medical exams, um, forensic interviews, counseling, family support, and multidisciplinary casework. And it's important because uh, bringing the children to Scotty's house where they have a nurturing environment, they have subject matter experts, um, to be able to um, have them conduct an interview about what happened to them um, which is accessed by law enforcement and by Child Protective Services and by other uh, organizations uh, involved, allows the children to tell their story maybe once, maybe twice, but not have to go to different buildings, different organizations, different agencies, uh, and have to tell and retell their story and relive their trauma. So that team casework has been something that I've certainly learned from in studying this organization as a very positive uh, opportunity to, in a, in a very sad situation, to try to help keep the focus on the child uh, in need. And I think it, you know, holding, holding each other accountable uh, across these organizations 
um, to track and not lose that child. Outputs we'll, we see are, the, of course, the safety of the child. Um, justice for the abusers. Scotty's House does not make a recommendation for punishment for the abusers, but nonetheless, that um, is something that comes out of it with law enforcement's involvement. And healing the child, stopping the repeated abuse as part of the short-term outcome, obviously safety of the and security of the child, and uh, making sure that they have uh, completed, uh, very accurate, efficient um, forensics collection, whether it's investigatory or medical exam. Intermediate term outcomes include stopping the repeated, repeated abuse and having optimization across um, all of the activities. And for long term, no cycle of abuse uh, where the child becomes an abuser or the child seeks out other uh, uh, relationships where they may be vulnerable and may repeat, be repeatedly abused again. Um, and so uh, help, having, helping them to have long-term health, mental, physical, emotional health, as they move from being a victim to being a survivor and having resilience in their life. These are some key performance indicators that um, I've reviewed with the executive director of Scotty's House, and some are more measurable than others. Um, but what we're looking at is this um, P1 requirement, uh, which is kind of creating more accountability among Child Protective Services to get those cases sent over quickly for those who are most abused. How is that heightened requirement impacting Scotty's house? And so um, it's a bit more complex than another organization I could have chosen where we're, we're trying to um, assess an, an, an injection of a, a program. But this accountability is something that's very important to them because they want to know um, how are they adapting to this and across their activities and across their capabilities in serving and in appro appropriately uh, measuring um, the impact of their work um, with this new requirement, which is good because um, before, uh, at times, it, it took them flagging, if they saw something in a system, flagging for law enforcement or flagging for Child Protective Services. Now it's the other way around where this 24-hour rule is in place. And so the injection of that 24-hour rule and um, a heightened importance on it um, for accountability will help get the children who need to get help to helped a lot faster. Program participants, and, you know, it really centers around the abused children themselves and helping them. But Scotty's House leadership and staff, the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, which is um, the umbrella organization for Child Protective Services, federal, state, and local policymakers. We see, obviously, um, laws changing um, and to try to help um, abused children get the help that they need. The families of abused children, you know, the siblings and the caregiver who, who was not an abuser, um, you know, how, how are they participating and as key stakeholders in this, uh, children's advocacy groups. And there are some really good ones that um, have come out of, of, of my research on this topic, which has been very reassuring to, to know that they're there advocating for children. And then you know, law enforcement across the, the counties that, that Scotty's House serves and community partner organizations and citizens, you know, those who um, are reporting and how uh, you build awareness in the community uh, for uh, what Scotty's House does and about child abuse in general. We talked about some of the program activities already um, that include, you know, the forensic medical exam, uh, the forensic interview, which is very important, uh, counseling and family support. These are key uh, capabilities that Scotty's House has and that they provide. 
delivering the program? Um, how do you engage with the community so that you can, you can have um, courageous reporters of abuse? Um, also making sure that CPS and law enforcement, that you have those relationships um, with those organizations because they make up that multidisciplinary team. And then having an appropriate staffing matrix. Scotty's House has about 700 cases a year that are reported to them, and they have uh, less than 20 staff members. So is that subject matter expertise matching up? Is it matching up across the cap each of the capabilities that they have? Are they adequately staffing? Um, grantor organizations, both federal and state, um, on allocating grants. And, you know, the board of directors and executive director and their leadership and, pro and proper governance and accountability. Um, partner organization and donor support are also key resources that help deliver the program. The outputs are um, remarkably simple, simple and also remarkably complex. I mean, the safety of the child, making sure that they're in a safe environment. If they have not been taken into emergency protective custody, making sure that they are... Um, getting the help that they need and in a safe place. And then healing the child. Uh, and not only understanding what happened to them, which is important for those team members to know for the legal and other aspects, but also just to, to know to be able to heal the child. And then, as, as mentioned earlier, Scotty's House is in a facilitation role only for gathering the evidence and supporting the child. Um, but an important part of the output is um, what takes place in, the, in that multidisciplinary team with justice for the abusers. Program outcomes are, you know, stopping repeated abuse and not having a, a long-term uh, cycle of abuse of either being someone that, that, that ends up in relationships where they are abused again or they become an abuser themselves and also having resilience physically, mentally, and emotionally to, to go on to, to uh, live their lives and to thrive. Um, this is the goal of Scotty's House. The causal link, if Scotty's House can strengthen the channel of accountability through their resources, um, through Child Protective Services and law enforcement reporting these cases, uh, if they can enhance that channel and in a, not only a, a, a faster pace to help the children and to keep them safe, but also in the efficiency and the effectiveness of the services they provide, uh, then children can have a better experience in this crisis time and greater resilience throughout their lifetimes. And this is an important um, link that the organization wants to explore. Things we must consider in the evaluation are HIPAA privacy laws, um, key performance indicators that are measurable, and there's still some work to do on that as, as I work through this course and also work with the executive director on a, properly evaluating, is narrowing down those KPIs to those that are measurable and those that are a attainable, really, to understand if we can get the data that's going to uh, factor in uh, will be important. And then looking at ex external political, social, and awareness factors that can drive um, child protective services and law enforcement to, to truly comply with that P1 order. And stakeholder input, which is very important. Um, to hear from law enforcement, to hear from the child advocacy state organization, um, to hear from national abuse organizations or watch groups, um, I would like to hear from these other organizations and not just the perspective of Scotty's house so that we can better evaluate um, the capabilities of Scotty's house and how they interact with those multidisciplinary partners. These are the references. Um, really enjoying the class and um, sorry that this was delayed due to other um, work requirements, but I'm finding it a most interesting uh, experience, and I look forward to learning from my colleagues as well. Thank you.